Welcome to Podlamania Podcast, your photography and video podcast, where we introduce you to some of the most amazing creatives from around the world. I'm your host, Wayne Johns, and I'm here with my good friend, buddy, and co-host, Jake Hicks. Hey, man. Hey, you doing, man? You good? Good, my friend. Good, good. We're up here in hipster heaven today. Hipster heaven, mate. Yeah, we're... that's it. Just going to knock the hacky sacks out of the way and jump on a few beanbags. <laughs> we're good to go. Where are we today, then, just in case we sound different to where we are normally? We are. We are sounding very different, aren't we? We're, we're currently in a goldfish bowl. And uh, we're looking at other goldfish bowls around us yeah. in this uh, in this lovely office space of, the, of our guest that we're using today. And to be fair, there's so many glass walls in here. I've got to say, I'm almost expecting to like put some coins in and wait for the curtains I, to I open. That, you know, like, you are fairly undressed as it is. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would take too long for you to get. It. It's bloody hot in here. It's it's roasting so hot. in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Well, we're, here we are on episode 23, and um, we've got an amazing guest with us today. And uh, we're going to be talking to uh, London-based fashion and celebrity portrait photographer Dan Kennedy. Um, a man who's been behind the camera and shooting celebrities and stars for around 28 years. Ooh. Ooh, look at his face change then. <laughs> um, uh, and he also shares um, his skills and knowledge through some very high-end educational workshops in London, in and around London. And I know that because I actually went to one the other day um, and it was really, really nice. <laughs> Dan's energy is amazing. To be so. fair, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. He, 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 as soon as he got, he was, I think he was on the way home and he called me about it. He's like, yeah. hey, it's actually, yeah. you know, it's actually really good. Yeah, the for energy a, in there. For a Londoner, it's pretty good. The, the delivery for, for, from this guy was just just really nice to, yeah, yeah. to go and see, man. Fist bumps the air, result. <laughs> so, I just want to put in here, Dan's got some special offers coming up for his workshops at the end of the show. So make sure you listen to that. Uh, but you've got to listen to the very end. Should we bring him in? I, I would do. Okay. Dan, welcome to the show and, and thank you for giving us some of your time and coming on as a guest. We really appreciate it because we know you're, you're pushed and we've had to reschedule a couple of times already, haven't we? Because of work commitments. Great to be here with you guys. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. So Dan, we're going to go straight into it because we know, uh, you know, time constraints and all. Um, first question we give all our guests is... For our audience, how would you describe yourself and what you do? Professionally, Dan, professionally. Yeah, not, not, not your weekend work. <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm a celebrity and fashion photographer. I, uh, I, I shoot um, some editorial, some advertising. My, uh, my editorial clients are the Saturday, Sunday Times magazine and Hollywood Reporter and Billboard in the US. I shoot quite a lot of stuff in London for them. And um, my commercial clients are Estee Lauder, Disney, Marks and Spencers, people like that. So I'm London-based, nice. predominantly celebrity photographer, um, yeah. mixing those two kind of fields, really. Yeah, you haven't always been in the world of celebrity photography, though, have you? I haven't. No, indeed, I haven't. No, yeah, I started at my local newspaper in Norfolk back when I was 20 years old. Is that yeah. where you're from originally, Norfolk? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. So started there on my local paper, and then uh, I moved from there to uh, to work at a news agency in Nottingham, and then from Nottingham to London. So. Nice. Okay, so, so you've got your background in the, in the press world then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, don't, you don't miss it? I don't actually, no. I, I, <laughs> Funny, I, I, I don't, yeah. It's a different world now, of course. But. It is a different world now, yeah. Um, I, um, I, 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 I don't miss it, but there's some, so many valuable parts of the job were kind of learned on the job training, you know, um, during those early years. Um, definitely speed and, you know, and um, being able to kind of multitask and stuff like that. I think that that training is kind of second to none, really. Because you're going back to the days of film where it's, you know, you're out shooting however many rolls of film and then you've got to quickly turn that around, what, the next day for the, for the paper? <laughs> yeah, the next absolutely. Day? Yeah, I used to, um, on my, my first newspaper was the Great Yarmouth Mercury. So sort of man stubs toe on pavement, go around, see the pavement. <laughs> gotcha, <laughs> see gotcha, man. gotcha. Uh, yeah. Poor little Susie didn't get into ballet school. <laughs> little Susie like that, <laughs> holding the ballet pump, you know. Um, gotcha. But uh, but you, uh, uh, yeah, so but, but from a technical point of view, yeah, I was um, I was shooting on, on Nikon FM2s and um, I was shooting sort of five, ten rolls of, of uh, HP five film a day and then processing it by hand in the dark room in Great Yarmouth and thinking about it now I mean it, it, it's kind of crazy really you did the whole process like so we did the process yeah. ourselves yeah so we used to have to keep all the chemicals topped up in the yeah, yeah. in the wet tanks and stuff and oh, so gosh. it would be like Memories. come back to um come back from a job and process the film and then um make a black and white print of the of the 
shot that you chose and then photocopy the black and white print and then fax the photocopy to the no, head office. Yeah, and then if it was sort of, uh, if it was deemed worthy enough, then they'd send a motorbike courier to come and pick up the film. The film. So yeah, it's kind of crazy. The good old really. days. Yeah. The good old so you days. would fax through an example. You imagine what that would look like? Serious. A faxed photocopy. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. You're hired. Jeez, yeah. Man. yeah. Is that upside down? <laughs> well, we'll have it anyway. Well, it's like fax of two colours wasn't it? I mean, like, no, it's it's black, black and white. white. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's be monochrome. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. It's just, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. How on earth? Really? <laughs> Quite how they made any decisions, I don't I, know. Yeah. Maybe they didn't really. Maybe they, they didn't. Somebody just looked in and went, that'll do. Yeah. That'll do. So yeah. so why celebrity portraiture? And I say that more because do you, do you shoot more celebrity portraiture than you do fashion or have you got quite I do, yeah, yeah. Definitely more and it's moved that way, really. Um, I, I think, you know, I... Um, I I left Norfolk and then I, I moved to the Midlands and I worked for a news agency where um, uh, the ante was up somewhat. You know, there was no, in, in the local newspaper, there was, you know, you could kind of make the odd mistake and, you know, you'd kind of get wrapped over the knuckles. But once I moved to Nottingham, I was working for a news agency that covered the middle of the country for all the national papers. So there was absolutely nice. no chance of, of mucking up there. Uh, so um, the stakes were kind of much higher, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so I did that for a about 18 months and it was pretty full on, but it, it was it, enjoyable, yeah. really big learning curve. But uh, I thought after 18 months, I don't want to be here working. You know, it, it, I, I, I had my eyes on London by then. Okay, so okay, so um, I remember I took a, um, I took out a 15,000 pound loan and then I went and bought a Toyota Corolla for 15,000 pounds on the same day. So the two, fi- two fi- <laughs> so the two uh, financial agreements wouldn't, the high purchase agreements wouldn't see each other. Uh, get took it. a deep breath and came down to London with no work. And uh, wow. I don't think I'd do anything like that now in terms of, you know, I would never, I would never take um, those kind of risks. No. I probably should, but, um, you know, being sort of carefree in 25. And I remember my um, using my, my my loan money to buy the first uh, Nikon D1 digital camera. Oh, I was super excited yeah, about yeah. that. So so I had I had a, probably a good four or five years of um, working uh, in newspapers in London. And then, um, and then I, uh, and then I realised, um, yeah, I realised I didn't want to be like a news hound forever. Really, I was never, I was never so much at the breaking end of news. I was doing more kind of features, and I got to travel the so, world. So you say features. So you're not out there on the step that appearing through somebody's window, then? Like that's not. No, not so much of that. Um, I, um, I did some kind of breaking news events, you know, outside Downing Street, that gotcha. kind of thing, and I, I was getting shifts for the Times and the Sun and various other newspapers. So it was just kind of like a, yeah. a, you know, just a sort of a jobbing shifter. Um, but I sort of, I, I did, you know, a good three or four years of that. And then I thought, I don't want to be doing this in another, te- another 10 years, really. Yeah. So um, I actually met, I met um, a celebrity agent and um, and I started doing some um, some uh, freelance jobs for her. And then I managed to sort of slowly smooth my way over f- into the studio. Um, I was on a shift for the sun and they sent me to Holborn Studios um, and said, oh, you know, you're, you're photographing here, say. And um, I remember almost visibly shaking, thinking I've got no idea uh, of anything about studio equipment. And, and how, how much how prep to... time have you got for this? Yeah, Next I mean, like, week like or... an hour and a half or something oh. like that. So, oh, right. so uh, I phoned my friend Matt. <laughs> Lo- 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 Right. Plenty of time. Oh my god! Yeah, before the days of googling while you're, uh, you know, <laughs> arriving at the studio. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, I um, had a friend who was a great photo assistant. So I kind of called emergency call to him, and I kind of booked him to come and help me. And he sort of showed me roughly where to put the lights. And uh, that was sort of, um, you know, even though it was um, it was nerve wracking, I sort of winged it somehow. Nice. And that was like my first kind of, you know, studio shot. And then I think the because a group as well. I mean, that's yeah, I mean, doing a yeah. solo portrait is hard enough yeah group group shot. Shot. Oh, exactly like... yeah totally I was at the wind machine on 11 out of 10 they looked like they were in a wind tunnel you know eyes yeah. so. dry now eyes dry I'm now I can now. google that image later <laughs> <laughs> yes. about. I gotta find that the first <laughs> <laughs> oh, group no. oh, yeah. is, is that one on your website Dan it's yeah. actually yeah it's a rolling <laughs> screensaver yeah. Yeah. yeah prints are available I think we're, uh, we're <laughs> two worry, of the, we'll, we'll put a link to it in the show notes two of worry. the limited edition are left love it yeah so <laughs> cool so you're obviously you you're, you're known for celebrity portraits but you 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 do shoot fashion fashion work too and do you enjoy 
a little bit more freedom and time associated with that side of the business. Yeah, you just said you had an hour to do like, I mean, I presume you don't get much lead up to a celebrity shoot, you know, whereas fashion, you know, you have a little bit more controlled. um, Yeah, definitely. And it's really nice having those two different disciplines. You know, I think I, I think I get booked for a certain number of of reasons. I think it's because how I am with the talent from a celebrity point of view, and also how quickly I work. And I think that speed comes from that news training and that news background, being able to work really quickly. So uh, I kind of know, you know, I can sense when I'm being booked for those kind of reasons. So having to be really reactive, you might get 25 minutes with someone on a rooftop, you know, in London, and then the, uh, you know, all of the previous days just spent doing prep, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to shoot it? You know, what's the, you know, what's the, um, what's our plan of attack here kind of thing. Whereas with a fashion shoot, um, yeah, you know, the, the pressure's off to, to a certain extent, you've got, you know, models, um, you've got amazing clothes and there's not so much that, um, that, that kind of pressure. So, but, but with the pressure, um, you know, something kind of happens often during that 45 minutes. You know, I've heard the, many, the, yeah, the, many people the, say that. The squeeze is, yeah. is, is, is sort of like making it Something happen. unique that, that comes yeah, out that you I, can't I plan so. for or anything like that. And, and yeah, I mean, although I've never shot like that, I can definitely see how something would come out of that, that spontaneity, you know, that, that you maybe just don't, can't get any other way. You can't plan for it or anything. You yeah, just, sort of like it's like mustering up the energy within the room. Come on, let's get going. Let's going. Okay, let's just do one more. Can we quickly do this against the black? Okay, very lastly, just outside on the roof. Okay, bam, and we're done. It's sort of when you don't have that, then the magic can still happen. Yeah, but, okay. you know, yeah, definitely something happens with it. So now. what is your philosophy then each time you pick up a camera, whether it be, you know, with the celebrity style shots, whether it be the fashion, like what is your mindset? What is your goal each time you pick up the camera? Do you, do you have that in mind or is it just, let's just cross our fingers and hope for the best. I've got the skills. Let's just let my, let my experience do the, do the talking. <laughs> as talking. It That's a really good question actually. And I think it's a, it's like a little bit of both. I, I've, I definitely suffered from over prep, I think earlier on in my career where I would try and lock everything down and I'd make documents with exactly where the shots were going to be and exactly what was going to happen. And actually sometimes I think you lose something then when that happens, you know, there's, there's the extra little bit of magic that can happen where you just leave things a bit free. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I say to myself, I'll just shoot tomorrow with one soft lighter on one pro photo B1 head. So, you know, and I will make it happen with yeah. this one light. We'll just treat it carefully. Um, we don't need any power supply. It's battery operated. Let's just, I'll get the best possible results I can in this scenario. You know? So you think that with what you do that sometimes constraints are a good thing then? I think so, definitely. Because we have so many options now. There's a million and one modifiers and, you know, cameras can, you know, photograph the DNA in your skin. They're so powerful. You know, like we have too many options sometimes. Of, of course, yeah. I'm doing like a, um, like a theatre poster campaign shoot tomorrow and, uh, you know, right now in my head I'm going to take some Ari Fresnel lights and I'll also take five flash heads and I don't know yet I'll know within a few hours um you know exactly what I'm going to do um but I'll probably ship all of that kit in there Mm. and then I might only use a little bit of it so leaving some things open to you know maybe there's you know, maybe there's an amazing little rooftop area or maybe yeah, yeah. I spot something down near the service lift that looks kind of amazing and, and that takes us off course in a good way, you know? So, yeah. yeah so it's, it's the thing, isn't it? You, you know, unless you're pinpointing exactly how you're going to shoot and what kit you're going to take, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit extra to be a little bit more creative and spontaneous. Definitely. You know? or, Absolutely. As we said it, Jake, sometimes equipment fails and we get a, a happy <laughs> accident, don't you? Where yeah. Well, I mean, get a I result mean, you don't realise. I think there's a saying that says, you know, amateurs get a great show whenever everything's going right. Professionals get a great shot when everything's going wrong. Uh, you I know, love there's that. Certainly, um, yeah, there's certainly a, a, an ability to light yourself out of any corner sort yeah. of thing. Um, I know where I stand now then. Thanks. It's best. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to bring it up live, but I mean... <laughs> But it's um, interesting that you mentioned about how uh, you you find that sometimes you used to over plan something, and uh, I, 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 like sh- I just would have thought that would be sh- surely you can't over plan. But it's interesting to hear somebody you know like yourself say, Do you know what, just sometimes just have the faith in your experience to let it just let it let all the pieces fall into place because we're not like we, we are photographers, but we still got to have people on set, like a makeup artist or a stylist, stylist or yeah. a, and a subject, whether it be a model or you know. So there is it is yeah. is always that collaborative effort that gets to the end end result as it were commercially especially 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I give myself a few easy wins as well. I always travel with like black velvet. I always keep that with our kit at all times. You yeah, know, yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of steal an extra portrait uh, using that, you know. And um, so I, I'll often set up a few safe shots and then leave some space for some spontaneity. Yeah. Good advice. Um, yeah. Good advice. Yeah. 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 During the, um, I shot Jerry Halliwell just before Christmas and, uh, there was an example of a whole load of dialogue, which was all about shooting in the lounge. Everything must happen in the lounge. Yeah, we're going to get into this in the question. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can go into yeah. that one now. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, it was about your Jerry Halliwell shoot. Oh, oh but yeah. Well, I was just going to say that, um, you know, it was kind of locked down from a, for, um, a you know, uh, in terms of the the agreement was that everything would happen within the lounge. And um, we had all our lights set up in the lounge and she arrived 10 minutes early and uh, sort of said, I'm ready, let's shoot outside on my horse, you know, so <laughs> let's leave, yank really? all the cables out and run outside. I'm looking at this shot and, now. Uh, yeah, okay. And, um, you know, had to sort of, you know, be a bit adaptive there and work out. Because when you say shoot outside, I'm looking at the shots and you've got Literally. like sea stands and bloody great backdrops and chairs and stuff. So it's not just, okay, oh yeah, just photograph me outside. Yeah. You took everything outside. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Studio yeah. Shoot like, outside. Just go and have a quick coffee, yeah. Jerry. And uh, we'll... Uh, <laughs> so it's all, almost, <laughs> almost with your backgrounds and stuff then, you almost still wanted to carry on to get the initial shot you had in mind, but you just basically shifted location and then had to shoot obviously additional stuff on top of what you're, you had in your mindset already. Yeah, definitely. And shooting outside, I always have two assistants. There's always just so much more to move and stuff than normal. Sure. And uh, I only had one with me that day. Oh, and, uh, no crap. I think the Digitech was <laughs> off sick as well. So it was, uh, oh, we, no. we, were, we were really kind of short, short staffed. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, um, that was, it, it was, it, it was challenging. There was a, a sweat yeah. was broken to say the <laughs> least at the end of that. So, I mean, anybody can see these shots on your website. They're yeah. right, right at the top there. What's the, is, is this all natural light or cause you've got a beautiful portrait of Jerry's, sat in front of a backdrop here with a you know, yeah, some green I think, chair um, behind her. I, I, think that that was all, I think it was all daylight and a Beautiful. bit of a reflector there. So and that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah and that's it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I took, I think we took one B1 outside um, and I think... Um, I think I think I might have used a tiny bit of that, but again, it was just sort of being really reactive and looking at what was happening, seeing what her mood was like. Yeah. She was sort of playful and mucking around and moving around, and also with the with the horse being there as well. You know, with Flash, I wanted to be careful with uh, that. Yeah. So, right. So yeah, yeah, true, true. suddenly we had to sort of, yeah. you know, you often if you just twist the, if a reflector catches the light, you know, so I can't see you, it with a saddle. Can, on. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no saddle. No, no, but that's no. but that's a bonus, isn't it? When you turn up with celebrities and and people like that, you don't get a lot of time with them so you know you don't know what mood they're in when you arrive you don't know whether they're looking forward to the shoot not looking forward to the shoot so when you get there and in a happy playful mood it's kind of a bit of a bit of a bonus isn't it then you go oh, they're in they're in a good mood yeah, absolutely. And, and I often say to people, it's that this job is like 80% logistics and sort of a 20% photography at the end. You know, sometimes I'm... Pressing spot- the button's easy, but... Yeah. It kind of is. Yeah, I'm spotting like a potential m- mini problem happening over in the corner of the room as I see the talent arrive and there be some crosswords about the breakfast not being gluten-free and then, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, the stylist is 10 minutes late and oh, that geez. can literally throw off the whole the yeah. whole shoot off course. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, it, often there's damage limitation and uh, it's a sort of a, it's a, a plate spinning ball juggling act of trying to make sure spotting all of these scenarios checking you know are they okay over there and I think she needs help with her case yeah. uh, actually you know you look fantastic in the blue dress you honestly look amazing you know it's a bit of that you know which um, so, 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 so what are the main differences like we all photograph portraits of people but like, what are the main differences between you photographing portraits of people and then celebrities like what, what, what is the key difference for you then is that it's just just a lack of time when it comes to yeah, those portraits? I guess a lack of time I think also we're very the I, I, um, I wouldn't say I have a team but I have a you know I have a few people who work with me I have a couple of regular assistants and a and a digitech that work with me regularly um, and um, we're you know, by default, we're very unfazed about the the um, the nature of who we're photographing, and I think yeah. that that helps a lot. You know, if we were, uh, had sort of slight stars in the eyes, you know, then I think um, that would be uh, that would slow things down a little bit. So, okay. Okay. so, so it, it, we're we're kind of you know, um, so I'm you're not, not feeling starstruck, in, really, like you know? you know, bowing down and like, oh my god, you're like, you're not, you're not, you're not um, sort of, uh, how should we say? pandering to them too much but at the same time you are still trying to let them know that you know they're the star of the show and like all that sort of thing as opposed to maybe you wouldn't do as much with a 
It's all about that. person with a normal ego. You're, you're dead right. It's absolutely that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, you're having to just sort of balance that yeah, out a little bit, yeah. you know, um, and and just sort of, yeah, we... Because we, if you love them too much, they just walk all over you. Of course, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And and often what we find is is um, they're making a split second judgment about you. They, look, they, they come in, they look right at me and they want to know that I'm totally in control. Yeah. So if I waver at all, oh, um, well, you look stressed. Well, I think, uh, okay. should we start are there? Actually, no. Should we start on the red background? As soon as they see really? that, then they'll have you for breakfast. Yeah. So okay. it needs okay. to be like, yeah. hi there, Bobby, great to meet you. Shot one's against the black background. Shot two's sitting on the sofa and shot three's going to be up on the roof and you'll be out of here in about 45 minutes. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay. Boom. Okay. Then yeah, true. all the moods change. Okay. Then they're like, he sounds like he knows what he's doing. They love to be controlled then, really. They love to be told what they're doing. Indeed, yeah. And they want to know that the room is controlled yeah. and that it's being run by someone who it's knows what they're doing. Um, any wavering around and that's it. They'll then be, they, they'll either lose interest or... They might kick up or they might, you know, so. And they might yeah. just leave. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they well, leave. Start, yeah, yeah start, they leave, start pushing back like, yeah. like yeah. toddlers are like, testing you sort of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, suppose, I suppose you can always, you've only had that, you've only got that power through your experience as it were. And, and I think so, yeah, because of course, yeah, go back. And to you've it, always yeah. got those safe shots in your in, in your head as well that you know that I'm, I know I'm going to get something here yeah, yeah totally and I think it's all the, it's the experience as well which means you know it can kind of you know I know that we're you know, I know what quick wins will kind of work I nearly always have a um, a bare head with just a spill kill on it with a piece of trace uh, over it yeah, set just up an extra it, yeah. white wall gotcha. I always yeah. have that and that has saved, fail. saved yeah. me so many times yeah, you know yeah. sometimes it's way too harsh for a woman yeah. and sometimes it can bring out an amazing element in a woman that with a tiny bit of movement on the hair can yeah. really, um, you know, I've done countless cover shoots where we've had a five light set up. Um, everything's really involved. And then I'm like, okay, I think we're done. Could you just stand over here against the white wall for me for so a this, second? Is this the one where the assistant is holding the flash above um, the camera? Actually, we use the C stand and you are, just boom it over the top. But it, it, okay. yeah, it's I like it to thing. be yeah. dead over the top. Over um, the top. Yeah. And there's something about that clarity that sometimes can just it, you're not quite as mean as Rankin then that makes some poor assistant walk around with it all day <laughs> I see the poor son <laughs> carrying around that light of the camera all day and no. you put it on a stand for him you won't catch me doing yeah, that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> not always maybe for about four hours yeah, exactly. but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing okay. but the thing is is that it's like that lighting setup it, it can be so complementary and and have such a, a beautiful impact on the image can't it? In, in the tonal ranges especially and can make ju just your subject pop that's the beautiful thing about it. it it works in so many ways absolutely yeah. yeah and i think it's sort of quick and easy and you can have it there set up ready to go you yeah. know it's sort of sometimes there's no way really of knowing whether that will you know whether that will be a great thing or not yeah. but it's easy to have set up ready to go but it's been funny the times that i've used it and then they're like oh my god the shots on white knock everything else out of the park and i think wow what about all my <sighs> crafting of my <laughs> you know, five four hour set yeah. build time oh, with yeah. uh, <laughs> my really narrow grids and putting a tiny bit of smoke <laughs> wisping in the background and, the, you, know, you don't want any of that do you? they're like no we love this one it's like oh, I could have saved myself like 40 minutes exactly yeah. so on that note then what is like one of the hardest challenges that you've come across with shooting these type of portraits is it time or is it like the location or is it power or is it the artists themselves like what, what, what is it what's, what's been one of the biggest challenges you don't have to name names if that's you don't a, want to but that's a that's a great question i think it i think it just is um it, it's really a mix of things you know you can get somewhere and then they've said there was power available and there isn't you're in a Classic. ballroom and yeah. then there's a hundred meter stretch to where the nearest power is naturally you would have just hired in a load of b1 heads yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. the battery powered heads yeah. you know and why on earth didn't they tell you that or i've certainly been in that instance where i've got six chained together extension you, yeah. cables yeah, yeah. from next <laughs> Reach. Hi, uh, I was That's wondering if right. we could just plug this in. <laughs> it's just a hairdryer, honest. We don't have six lights yeah. attached to it. <laughs> yeah. And I've had, I've had that in an old house, literally a very, very old house, and it just blew the circuit. But it also it blew, would, yeah, it also blew two of my yeah. lights as oh, well. Yeah. No. So yeah. then not only was I under pressure for that, I was, I was also two lights down. Oh, stressful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In location the houses, that's the, yeah. the first thing we do. Yeah, I mean, keeping an eye on power and stuff like that. In locate, we're in location houses half the time, and in studios the other half. And in location houses, we always ask where the fuse box is yeah. and make sure that we know that before the owner goes out. Often the owner's like, "Hi, see you later, bye, I'm leaving." We're like, "What's your mobile number and where's the fuse box?" Fuse you know, box. Gotcha. They, 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 get me jumper uh, leads out. Your bit yeah, kind of. So you're not yeah, all battery powered then? Yeah. No, 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 not all battery powered. No, no, we still use. Yeah, we still use. And um, you're still using strobes, not the Aries, where you know. 
Yeah, I use both. I love the effect of Fresnel. Yeah. Um, they again, I use those in uh, to really save myself. Sometimes I think in a really boring hotel room, um, you know, uh, using Fresnels. I I love the Aerie six fifty ones, the small heads, small you know, ones, and yeah. I um I just move the barn doors and put them in onto a sort of more of a shard type shape. And then I balance the available room light with those. And that can nice. really just sort of bring some extra kind of drama yeah. quite reasonably quickly into the scenario. And I love, I love the look of the, the, the Fresnel, you know, with the, with yeah. the, with the, it's um, a specific the lens. type of light, isn't yeah. it? It does give that, that, that lovely warmth to it as well. Yeah. It? Sometimes well. in a bland hotel suite, and then yeah. you're put, putting up one big soft light source and actually, you, you know, you can't make, many changes in this in the hotel room right. there's maybe it's beige often things are bolted down in hotel suites you yes. know pictures side tables you try and move in it's got all the data connection they knew it. you were coming down didn't they, they kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but using aries can really help that yeah. you know that can really end up sort of you so know, for those that don't know what is this Fresnel, yeah. So the Fresnel, um, so the Ari is a, it's a it's a tungsten light, so just a very bright light, and the, the Fresnel is just a lens that, that is changing the angle of the light in front of it. So the light's actually focused a little bit. So it's like um, that. It's, if, if, if I remember, it's like the old lighthouse, lighthouse glass is, that you have on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly yeah. The same. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's old, you used to be used for old Hollywood lighting. So George yeah. Hurrell is a master of you know the the old Holly, Hollywood style, right, which is yeah. using three of those, um, using three of those kind of Fresnel. Um, you know, to create some, it's hard light, but to create some real shape to it as well. Um, and, and something lovely happens in the shadows. You often get a grad, like a gradation within the shadow, which is really, really nice. nice. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So, the only times that I've used them, I've found that there's a very consistent exposure across the spot. That like normally if you're just using like a, I don't know, if you just channel the light down into it, that it's, you, you'll have a fade out. But I've always found with the Fresnels that you do get a very even exposure right across mm. the spot. So I suppose you do you get that nice hard, like you say, but it's still very crisp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. super yeah. crisp. Yeah, and you've got Expensive to be Expensive modifiers, so. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is the 650s, they're not too big, are they, physically in terms of size? They're not, no. Our three just live in a sort yeah. of a soft bag and we yeah. bring those in a lot of the time. So I'll be taking those tomorrow on my shoot, for example, and nice. I've got no idea whether I'll use them or not. They might save me. And or, I saw you use you know. them, obviously, when I came to your, yes, your that's workshop. Right. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't a hands-on workshop, was it, that one? It was... Um, yeah, it was just uh, to to. Yeah, it was like a demo, wasn't it? Demo, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was lovely, lovely. Sit back and watch. <laughs> but you're still using these hot lights in that environment, then. Uh, yeah, um, did I use a Fresnel there? I think I did. Didn't yeah, I? you had you you had a couple yeah. of six fifties there. Yeah. you were cut, you were gelling them. You were pulling in yes, a little bit right. of jelly. Everybody's yeah, doing yeah, it now, mate. Right. Yeah, <laughs> overrated. Yeah. I saw Jake Hicks and <laughs> really inspired it, me. Yeah. So do you have a um? Uh, going back to celebrities, do you have a favourite celebrity shoot that just kind of sits up there as one of your best? I mean, and that can be either photographically or just a person in general, like the atmosphere, the fun. I should have had this question rehearsed, didn't I? Oh, uh, no. That's why, that's why we don't tell you that. Oh, exactly. There's just so um, many good ones, man. So, so many good ones. Good ones, ones yeah. one. Um, there isn't one that really sticks out. I think, I mean, the day, I know we mentioned it, but the, but, but the day at Jerry's house was just sort of like laughable and in a great way and all, 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 all the best bits really of being really challenged and then having a really good time as well. It didn't sound yeah. like it was a huge crew either. It sounded like it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty it, close. Yeah, it was you know? small. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and having to adapt to the sort of situation as well. So, um, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I think um, I've photographed a lot of women politicians recently and they've been... Um, fascinating just okay. just various people who are uh, who are really at the top of their game ah, okay. um you know um uh, ah. jess phillips mp i went we went up to um we went up to birmingham and and uh I bought a piece of green felt from the weird material shop in uh, in Shepherd's Bush, and I sort of gaffer tape <laughs> that to her wall, and uh, that became the Sunday Times cover randomly. But uh, so that was your plan, uh, then? Uh, to, uh, yeah, it was work. actually. I, I was like, I'm not I using Colorama. Sometimes the Colorama colours, you know, yeah, they do yeah. my head in. So. Yeah, got okay. Yeah, okay. So I, I, paper I often, in general. I, I paper in general. Yeah. I often drive home past the material shop in here in West London. We've got a myriad of material shops, and they uh, yeah. they're like Aladdin's caves. Good advice. Yeah, I'm always things, in my. So, uh, I got yeah. fabric land near me. And what Have was in there by yeah, yeah. yeah, just yeah. reams of stuff. Well, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can find yeah, some really yeah. nice things. Yeah. That yeah, so uh, so that that one was probably one of your easier, not easiest, but easy as in the environment and the and and the people with you and the fun and the stuff. Yeah, it's just it's nice when it's like that, though, isn't it? It's, you don't feel so pressured. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so definitely. Sort of yeah. relax, and they're generally up for 
doing something better out of the ordinary, perhaps, to get a different kind of show. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes we're in a situation where, you know, the PR will arrive late onto the celebrity shoot and say, oh, you know, she doesn't like the blue dress at all. And actually, well, hang on a minute. You you weren't here half an hour ago and she came out in the blue dress saying, oh, my God, it's amazing, the blue dress. So <laughs> yeah. sometimes we're yeah. really, you know, we're, we're really kind of, you know, we're, 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 we're really restricted. I, I was doing a shoot with um, Carrie Underwood. She's like an American oh, singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, there was going to be on the, uh, uh, it was in a, a hotel suite, the Corinthia Hotel, and she arrived, and then we 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 kind of wrecked the suite, and then went upstairs onto the roof, and the idea was to have a bit of London in the background, and uh, and she was like, oh, it's so nice up here, and then the PR arrived, you know, twenty minutes later, she will not go onto the roof, she will damage her vocal cords. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, okay. Wow. Well, you know, okay. okay. You know, she just seems like a really nice, normal girl from America, you know, yeah. and then she seems very happy with everything. So the mood changed massively, you know. Wow. So okay. We have to be really, you know, we, that doesn't happen all the time no. but but we have to be kind of prepared for that it, you can it can kind of knock you sideways and especially when you've got to a location and then you've wrecked that rooftop shot as your killer shot yeah. you know that's going to uh, yeah. be my hero shot yeah, yeah. And, and and then that Smashed. gets wiped out the way and maybe the rest of the hotel is not as you imagined or whatever so again then you're thinking on your feet where's my reserve background could I shoot in the hallway yeah. where else you know we go straight down to the reception find the PR person are there any communal areas we could use sorry guys do you have a library uh, or any kind of communal area we could see oh you do yeah oh a ballroom great okay and then suddenly okay. we've got an extra shot okay. which maybe or not an extra shot but we've replaced the rooftop shot because yeah. they just happen to have a thousand square foot ballroom that they didn't think you would really be that bothered about well, right so, I mean who doesn't have one absolutely yeah. you know, so I get a bit bored of myself but. Yeah. well I suppose you didn't have the surprise of communal bathrooms I suppose that's one thing isn't it <laughs> communal areas <laughs> so I'm sure there is no typical celebrity style shot but can you take us through like the process like how, how long do you get who, who gets in touch with you do you have an agent is there a PR like what is the process how long does it take how long have you got to prep what is they normally asking for is it 20 shots is it three shots how you know and then how much time do you get on the day how long do you have with them and what's your sort of process what's, what's the full process that's, from, that's, like, that's like four questions in one day. I want to give a little bit of time to think about <laughs> it yeah <laughs> take those off yeah. yeah sure I mean it's um so the, the the editorial work normally comes in with quite reasonably Sometimes with a short notice, we may have between two days and two weeks notice. Um, okay. So that, that's kind of normally the time span. And then... Um, so even though it's longest, it's still not a huge amount of time. No, no, yeah. it's not a huge amount of time. Not if you're time. busy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I have, I have a producer who works for me full time, Louisa, and she basically sorts out everything helps helps me sort everything out and so she'll be doing a lot of liaising uh, when I'm on shoots and that's really valuable for me because I can't be answering the phone and you know jumping onto conference calls about you know what the idea for the shoot will be when I'm on another shoot so okay. so she takes a lot of pressure off that way because I don't have an agent I she's doing that role for me really and helping we, look after that kind of hear this you know more more and more often now mm. that oh, right. a lot of people are producers, having producers yeah. rather than agents mm. it's a very interesting turn mm. in the market yeah 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 it just seems to be just seems to work for me really yeah um and so then the idea will come through um uh, and that can be really varied you know sometimes we'll have an email saying oh hi are you free on monday yeah. to shoot you know so and so celebrity on Tuesday at Spring Studios. We want it to be shot on Storm Grey Colorama. It's eleven o'clock call time. See you there. Yeah. That's three emails or three calls. That whole thing. And then we also have calls where from someone who's maybe not so much in a in a um, uh, in an editorial capacity, so more of a kind of a either a PR company or a private client or a brand or something. Who'll be like, oh hi, we want to inquire uh, about doing a photo shoot with you. Um, oh, okay, sure. Right. What sort of shoot would you like? Well, you know, uh, well we'd love. To to think about shooting in a studio great okay if we did shoot in a studio what backgrounds could we use well there's a and that, <laughs> okay. That, okay. the first scenario the job might be nailed in three emails the second scenario could and often is 500 emails I, mate, yeah. I know and you, I'm months. sure you know exactly know. like that. So, the bend. oh yeah. would we need a stylist so how would we find a stylist is it possible for us to speak to the stylist yeah. all of this communication yeah. so right. as soon as we make experienced that, exactly yeah. as soon as we realise that that's going to potentially happen we charge them a production fee because I know how long it's going to take. Yes. Yeah, uh, we, we yes. need to charge for that time because they're then having their hand held through the process and that can be 
that can be, you know, so you're trying to you're something. trying to nip that in the bud as soon as possible. You're trying to find out, and you can usually tell from the way that's talking to you. It's like yeah. hey, these people really need a production. You must have the same things. For you sure, do. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you spot it. Um, yeah, a mile you, away. You spot it, yeah. And, and yeah, of course, you know, we want to be really helpful and make sure they have a good shoot, and and, and we do, and and they do have a good shoot. It's just a it's just a learning curve, I guess. Really, you almost with, with uh, the sort of the non experience, you're almost holding the hand a little bit, aren't you? Which takes, like you say, a bit more commitment, a bit more dedication, a bit more time. Yeah. on on your side, and and, yeah. and as we know, time is money so. yeah so they've, they've got in touch you've got two two days two weeks you've got okay you've got everything laid out you know what you're going to be doing you've got a pretty they want to do it in a studio and they want it against a great backdrop perfect what do they ask are they asking for like this is a celebrity shot we just need three images one and done like or what are they asking for normally yeah so on a on a magazine cover shoot um just as an example we'd probably shoot um four different shots so that means they would change their Four different sets. Yeah. Well. Okay. Um, sometimes on the same background, but they would change the clothes four times. So yeah. the magazine would want def- a clear cover shot and then definitely a DPS, which is a double page spread. Yeah. So the image needs to be landscape. Gotcha. So um, you need to. So we need to have composition, composition yeah. wise. Yeah. And Watch often. Out the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and of, often we're given the dimensions of the magazine and we're, we, we're shooting to those dimensions within our, our raw program capture one capture that we, that we yeah. use so that's showing us cover. the, the okay. actual the actual space and sometimes we even get a dummy cover which is really useful placement, um it yeah. is for placement that makes it a lot easier for us we can really then you know sometimes it's really nice to go in on a close portrait and crop the forehead off and get some real drama but the art director on the shoot is often really nervous about that because they want to put their cover lines in around the edge so yeah. they need the space but okay. if you're shooting to like a dummy cover that can yeah, be gotcha. that can be really useful and for for our audience because obviously they're very skill sets for those um, that don't know that the uh, in the software capture one pro tethering software it enables you to drop a basically a front cover overlay into your tethering shoot so you can drop that uh, on, on your image so that you can get the composition of your shot to fall in with the title of the page and any other text absolutely yeah definitely yeah um, and you, you that's on an opacity slider so you can sort of slide the cover in and out and so you can sort of you know uh, you can see it visually and see exactly where everything would uh, would sit so um so this, yeah this, i mean it sounds like you got a lot of time. I mean, normally you don't have a huge amount of time to do these celebrity shots. I mean, or have you just got a, like a digi guy there who's just doing all this super quick for you? Yeah, I mean, we're that. straight in there. Let's set up, get ready. For, so we always get in as early as we can, you know. So tomorrow I think we're in at 12 for a one o'clock call time, which is a little bit nervy for me. It's wow, not, yeah, not okay. too much time. Yeah, but, yeah, wow. So we'll get there and immediately recce all the areas and then work out what we're doing where and then it's start not, setting up. Long, so, so have you been to this location before? No, I haven't actually. You no. haven't recce it before you get there? No. Okay. No, so, wow. so this is the I mean do you do you kind of get excited about that or are you terrified about that I'm fine about that I you think we'll, we'll yeah hotel rooms follow a certain sort of pattern and stuff <laughs> yeah, I said true. earlier about yeah. you know it's always great asking what other little areas they've got that you could potentially shoot in you know so I'll be doing all of that tomorrow make, making sure that you know we've we, we've exhausted all possibilities yeah. and we are got options. I'm choosing the best possible backgrounds for, for for what we need to get so in a studio environment where we might be shooting on, say, a grey background, like you said, we'd do four shots. There'd be a cover, a double page spread, and then two other shots. So we might bring some furniture in, you know, to, to give some body shape. Um, and um, and each t- after each shot, the um, the stylist will change the outfit. So the cover shot would be wearing a certain outfit, and then they go and change, and then they come out ready for the second shot, which would be like the double page spread. Yeah. So that would be often we'll have a sofa or a couch or something like that to enable us to have the make the shape for the for the landscape yeah. shot which that shot would run over two pages and so then we do the shot three and shot four so yeah so, so in your shots then i know you've only got i mean four, like four shots is not much at all like you've got to be getting that's four really good shots what are you, are you going for character or are you going for trying to get more of the natural emotion out of somebody or you, do you know what i just want to make this person look as good as they possibly can do in a great image yeah, yeah that's a great question yeah. and actually really it's i think what happens is it's it's like the planet's a bit coming into alignment so yeah. as they come out and then I'm again assessing them second by second watching if they feel comfortable sometimes they're maybe not 100% comfortable in the outfit and I'll spot that and just say hey are you okay you know do you, do you are you happy wearing what you're wearing and have a little conversation with them about it and then we'll get into get into the situation music is crucial as well music yes, is so important one of my we have playlists different playlists for yeah. different uh, for, for different shoots um, often I'll say hey what do you want to listen to I was on a shoot last week and uh, uh, the girl said I just want to listen to Harry Styles so we had Harry Styles Perfect. in one direction blasting out for two hours um, but 
what um, the music is, yeah, really crucial. So as they come on set, then it's the mu- we're controlling the ambience a bit with the music. I'm yeah. seeing who's around. Often I'll get a lot of our crew to get out of the eye line. What that means is I'm just monitoring if I see any nerves from the talent. I'll yes. go over and say to our my assistants and sometimes even the digital tech back. guys, can you just keep to the side? Often these days there'll be someone from the PR company with a phone like this pointing it at the celebrity. There'll be yeah. two yeah. girls who are you know who've, who've just come along. One's on work experience and one's a junior account exec and they're just standing there behind me with their arms folded and I, <laughs> I sort of look behind me and there's an arc of 18 people yeah. 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 guys sorry uh, can we uh, can you just all get out please yeah. 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 clear and the room some, and sometimes yeah. I do say that and then I need to create that magic in that moment and really I'm looking for something quirky I'm looking for a real connection between me and her or re- me and him and I'm talking to them, reassuring them, making sure that the that the end of my lens, just that black circle, okay. is the only thing in the world they really need to be thinking about. Yeah. So really talking them into that, forget about everything else. Sometimes we polyboard off the whole area. So it's just me and them. It's and then up moment. comes the camera. Yeah. And I'm like, focus on this. And then there, then we're in. So it's it's have intimacy, a, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it is really, yeah. You don't need everything else and all that other noise and room noise and interference visually. And when you have that rapport, which you've got to build with your subject. Absolutely. You? And that's the time when it's happening. Yeah. So they're that's slightly the nervous. Celebrities are unique, do. though, in that you can do research on them. If, I do an, if I'm doing a regular portrait, I can't really do any research on the person. They come in and I have to get that connection. Now, some people like to go down the route of, yeah, I do loads of research and I find out what flowers they love. I find out what music they love. And so everything's just like, uh, you know, make sure I know ahead of time what coffee I need to be putting yeah. on. You can do that or you can go the other way and just try and create something unique based on that rapport that you've got, mm-hmm. which... Which camp do you fall in? Do you do a little bit of research? Do you do a lot? None? Um, I definitely do some, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, I want to know, you know exactly where they are, what they've been doing, what's happening with them, but not too much. Don't want to be like, oh, so, you know, you still love Cocoa Pops, do you? Exactly. <laughs> I want to get them to this exact character that I've seen online. Exactly, yeah. You exactly, want to be able to yeah. So then, bit. yeah, and then just having a conversation with them as if they're another human, you know, which they are, but just Perfect, a yeah. normal kind of conversation. I think I am I get the best results when they see me do that yeah i get the best results when they see me interact with them just as another person they respect as per- that as well and i think they, they respect, respect that, that. Yeah. and then i see the shoulders drop down a little bit and then maybe we can interact a little bit and then maybe there's some bits that come to the table oh. and then on top of that they they you know most of these people i'm photographing they're nobody's fool they know exactly what needs to um True what, what what need True what, what needs it's what, not their first photo shoot yeah. exactly yeah. and so sometimes they're in a right old grumps and really moody <laughs> and then the second they sit down once we're there and the polyboards are in and we're all ready to go it's all sweetness and light okay. And, okay. Uh, and and all the interaction as if we're Fine. best friends whatever the works second yeah. the camera's off back to moodiness again <laughs> the thing it's is kind of <laughs> the thing is as well it's like when they're coming in with you know once they've been sort of you know funneled in for this shoot that they're on that they're on the clock as well you don't know who's pissed them off beforehand either do you so you're like you don't know what you're getting until they arrive and you start talking to them whether it's stressed or you know um they've had a good morning or they just don't want to be here that kind of thing isn't it you've got to deal with all of that and still make make the magic yeah, absolutely. I remember, shot. I remember I shot uh, Alex Jones. She was uh, f- from the one show and, and, oh, yeah, um, yeah. it was for a, a BBC campaign and, um, she turned up and was, you know, seemed really kind of serious and, and didn't, you know, didn't, didn't really feel like she wanted to be there at all. And, and I found the shoot reasonably difficult. Um, and, uh, you know, it kind of knocked me a bit, you know, and I sort of was pulling out all the stops to try and, get what we needed and I did get what we needed and then a year later um, I was doing a shoot for like a fitness magazine and I looked at the call sheet and it's like oh you're shooting Alex Jones and I was like ah that was the shoot where I didn't feel that good and then she walked in hello lovely to meet you I'm Alex didn't remember the time we worked together previously <laughs> and was absolutely good as gold. Okay, so amazing. I think, you know, for we all have our days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the thing it's, it's you're just not taking it personally and yeah, realizing yeah. that you've got no idea what's happening in their world, um, you know, 10 minutes before they stepped into the studio. Yeah, so really. that's, and, that's and the, they're on fast paced timescale sometimes absolutely. like yourself, aren't they? How do you, just, just changing subject a little bit. How, how do you think our industry has changed a little bit for photographers and uh, and how hard is it to get noticed in our industry now? That's, that's the big thing. I think the industry's changed a lot. And um, I think, um, you know, the way that everything's gone with social media um, and the immediacy of everything has changed things massively. I mean, everyone now has an, an epic 
camera in their pop- pocket and uh, are using it, you know, every every, every few minutes of, yeah. of every hour. And that's obviously changed things massively. Um, I think it's it, it always has been such a competitive space, but I think it's probably more competitive than it's ever been. But I think there's still a chance for, you know, people who really want to, uh, you know, really want to get in and, and make their make their mark and, and be successful. I think there's definitely space for that. You know, it's, it's t- you know. T- t- taking gra- minimum uh, grafting really and, and um, you know, making sure that you're, you're, you know, you're the best you can possibly be. And I think, you know, you'll make it. I got a lot of discouraging, you know, um, advice as I was, you know, on my kind of on my way to where I am now. And, you know, I always remember someone said to me, oh, don't never move to London. It's saturated in London. Mm-hmm. Go down to Kent and, and set yourself up in Kent and just be the guy that if anyone needs anything. And I thought, I don't want to do that. I, I'm, I don't want to do that. I was 24 years old. I thought I'm going to go to saturated London and you know what, I'll make it work. And I sort of did. So I, I would say that to anyone else as well don't Mm. be discouraged by whatever anyone says you know having said that I think you need to stick out you know more than ever your work needs to be really strong you need to you know you need to practice like mad you need to be really creative um you know uh, and um uh, and yeah you've got to do those things to be able to 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 get noticed get noticed and 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 that kind of brings us on to um personal work and how how important personal work is and personal projects. I mean, how how do you think pers- how important do you think personal projects are to support your commercial work and and again to help you get noticed? Yeah, I think per, per personal projects are, are really important, and I think it's the one time uh, that you're not looking at a creative brief and and, yeah. and um, responding to somebody else's demands. So I try and um, you know do one reasonably sized personal project a year um i should do a lot more but i end up getting busy you know with kind of paid work but um in terms of um you know practicing your creativity really um i think i think they're so important i uh went to berlin um, and took a film camera and um i just uh, took a little background paper background and i found a local assistant and i just sort of pounded the streets of berlin and i stuck my background up against the wall near a funny flea market and i stopped some people that were walking past and just did some did some portraits and um the picture director of the Sunday Times saw an Instagram post of a mosaic of the portraits I'd taken and picked the phone up and, and booked me. So I think I think the you know the power of um, uh, the power of, um, of of showing the personal work that you can do um, is not to be underestimated. And also I think you know creativity is a muscle with which we can flex. You know, and the more yeah, you flex indeed, it, indeed. the better the better you you know the better you get. You have to hone that you know and um, and be as creative as possible. I say sometimes to the people on the workshops, you know, did you see some reflected light? You know, was it neon? Was it in a puddle in the rain <laughs> as you were walking through the streets of Soho, you know, or did you see someone on a bus looking mournful and then another bus passed it and then that moment had gone, you yeah. know, what did you see? Really open your eyes and look around and be creative and, uh, and, um, and show that great creative work and people will be, you know, really impressed by it and will probably then book you to shoot something quite boring, but, but maybe they'll pay you quite well, you know? <laughs> but, but that's the thing, because I mean, like your, your project you're just, t- you're just talking about then in, in Germany, which you sh- shot on film as well, you know, so uh, fair play to that. Um, at the end of the day, you went out there, you shot something you wanted to shoot, loved to shoot in your own time. Um, you shot it on all an- analog systems and then all of a sudden somebody's paying you for it. So that's like a, that's like a win-win, isn't it? And so you've been not only paid for that, but then you've been picked up on that type of work. So now you're also going to get perhaps another booking from that style of work based, based on just a personal project. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, um, something else happens and that's that often when you're shooting, uh, if you you shoot something really creatively, um, then uh, often people, um, you know, particularly out of the world of editorial, so more into advertising or PR, those kind of areas, people want to see how amazingly creative you are and they love your amazing creative work. They they want to work with you, but they probably don't actually want you to necessarily be that creative for the job they've got yes, for you. Yes, yes. So let's so get true. you, Plain you know, it is then. let's get you, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let's get you in a rain machine and in a parachute silk dress and four wind machines on a rooftop. And then they want you to shoot their t-shirt range against a white wall, yeah. but yeah. they're only going to book you to shoot the t-shirt range if they've seen your amazing kind of rain sodden portraits on the roof. Yeah. It's kind of random, but no, you're sort, of, right, yeah. sort of the way it works. Yeah, really. it's true. It's, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. They, they always see the most glorious stuff and go, yeah, we love your work. 
can we have some t-shirts on a white wall, please? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> but hey, we're still getting paid for it. I mean, Absolutely. We're still doing something we love. Yeah. So, so does your personal work, your personal projects, does that, does that differ heavily from your commercial style? I think they all blend into one a little bit. Um, I, I, I um, have a friend who's uh, like a material designer, um, a fabric designer, and she said to me, do you know, I, I just, I wake up in the middle of the night with ideas and they're like a tap I can't turn off. And I remember being so stunned by her saying that. I could, it couldn't be, you know, it couldn't be further from the truth than me. I mean, Jupiter needs to be in alignment with Saturn and then it needs to be a, you know, I don't know, a wolf moon or something or a high tide. And then I might just have half an ounce of creativity. I do really have to work at it. And, uh, really? and, and I have a, um, you know, I keep clippings and cuttings, so to speak. I screen grab things left, right yeah. and centre. Yeah. And I use the save function on Instagram a lot. Yeah. And I go back through those, those shots that I've saved. And I think, and I look at them and I think elements of those filter into my, paid work uh, definitely okay. into my definitely into my unpaid work as well my yeah. my next personal project is going to be just about shards of light no, I'm going to be funny so that's, using that's the very next oh, question oh, there you go. I'm, I'm <laughs> personal project you sure you not read these show notes <laughs> just had the show notes two hours before you arrived sorry. <laughs> yeah so um, your, your next project yeah that's interesting right. well yeah I, I don't know much about it yet shards of light is what it's going to be and I'm, okay. I'm just interested in using mirrors and constant light and bouncing the light from from um, from constant light on the people using mirrors. I've just seen there's some some references which are in my little reference folder which are, are lit. I, I think, I don't know, but I think they're lit using that kind of style and okay. there's something really lovely about that. So, and it, a particular it, time of day? I think it needs to be late, right, when the sun's just about gone or just before that. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe, so, maybe. yeah. I'm, are you going to do all this with natural light? No, I think that needs to be done. I, th- I, think it, I think it needs to be done with some constant light as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 I think, yeah. I think, I think, okay. uh, I think I need a good few play around days before yeah. I do this. And you're going to shoot digital or film? I'll shoot digital for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. You yeah. still shoot a lot, lot of film then? Or? I don't know. Not, not really, no. I, I, d- I did in the Berlin project, but not generally, no. Okay. I, I don't do that. I love, I really love the work of Platon. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he, you know, shoots black and white film. I love the strength to those portraits and they're epic. And uh, um, so, yeah, I really love that kind of work, but I don't tend to reach for the film camera myself so much. I think that's because what we get, I mean, I'm not so much of a purist, but I think that's, you know, down to what we can get now within Photoshop, within Capture One. I, yeah. you know, I, I, I tweak the raw image as I'm shooting it and I do quite a lot of quick color work on it i'm sort of putting a color grade on that shot as i shoot it and that's sort of like my vision of what that shot looks like so yeah, yeah. when those pictures go off to the retoucher they, they get sent off with that color, color kind of baked into them yeah. um and and that sort of you know the client never sees how the shot was without my weird color curve on it so yeah. i think i've sort of you know this part of True. my style i suppose yeah. is sort of you know sort of baking it in as i as i go and and therefore um yeah i'm not so um I'm I'm not so um, militant about being purist, and you know, didn't you? And what, what system are you shooting on now? Then um, I current, I'm, I'm shooting on Canon actually at the moment. Uh, very very occasionally Hasselblad, but less and less so because the quality of the Canon files are are so good. So but good. Which, um, which Canon are you using? Um, 5D Mark Fours. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and I think you know they they do a great job. Um, for, for where we're at. I'm really interested in mirrorless after kind of repelling it <laughs> to start with. I, um, I actually went back to Norfolk and my old mentor from the local paper, Bill Smith, uh, dear old Bill Smith, who's retired now, but um, actually really showed me up. I sat in his lovely large lounge with picture windows overlooking his garden and he was like, do you know about the Z7, the Nikon? I was like, no. And he's like, dear boy, you need to get up to speed with really? mirrorless. Wow. Like, so you're 68 or 70 and I'm He's got the latest I'm in my mid forties, late forties, and he's uh, he's giving me a lesson in mirrorless. But it was fascinating, and it was yeah. fascinating to see what they can do. Yeah, um, and um, it, it, you know, I've actually got, I actually have a diary entry once every three weeks in my diary that basically says tech research. Yeah. It's every Thursday, every three weeks, and that's, oh, really? that's oh, wow. a diary okay. entry for me to make sure that I'm up to speed with. Uh, with, so you, with so you have tech. to actively force yourself to do yeah, it because you're not really. somebody who is. Yeah, because yeah. I think I'm now in a situation where I'm happy with a Canon. If it works, and, exactly. and it yeah, works, yeah. and therefore I'm not going down the rabbit hole of tech. Yeah. 
Yeah, completely. and I'm, yeah. I'm 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 concentrating on making the visuals, which is yes. what, what my strong Most point is. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, I think it's really important not to be left behind of that. I mean, people are telling me about the you know the eye focus on these Sony's and and and, and the the, yeah. the frame rates and all of this sort yeah. of stuff now. And I'm don't very get, very don't get Wayne started for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, really, yeah, Wayne? Yeah. I used to be a Canon shooter myself. Oh, so did you? Over, yeah. yeah, over 23 years. Yeah. Obviously, I switched. I won't go deep into it, but obviously, I shoot Fuji now. So. Which, which yeah. mirrorless are you looking at now then? Well, I'm interested to see um, the the latest Sony A7R4, is it? And then, um, but I'm even more interested to see this latest Canon offering. Yeah, you are, isn't it? And just to see how how that could work for me. You know, a lot of the time I'm in a studio environment and I'm tethered yes. and I'm shooting flash. And I think, you know, from as I understand it, you know, a certain amount of the the brilliance of, of mirrorless is lost a little bit once you move into the world of being tethered and yeah. in, being in a studio environment to a certain extent. So, you know, I'll need to check that they're they're right for, for, for me, really. But I think um, you've got to move with the times, right? And you've got to know exactly yeah. what the latest tech is doing so yeah. i'm keen to i'm keen to have a play around do you want it do you need it as well yeah, that sort of thing absolutely. yeah is it is it necessary well yeah. it's not always necessary is it we know that because we could all pick up a film camera and still do our jobs of yeah. course yeah, yeah. damn yeah. you modern world <laughs> 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 I can see you with the eye focusing though, yeah, because yeah. yeah, we're not getting any younger focusing. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. I was, I was just been shooting film, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I was on a magazine cover shoot probably three weeks ago, and um, we had everything set up and it was yeah. in a studio environment. And then the the new editor of the magazine arrived and just sort of said, introduced herself and said, "Oh, um, I really like shallow depth of field." I was like. Okay, so um, we had to, to change the whole setup. It's a fairy light. Somebody said there. that to you. Yeah, yeah, really? the editor of the magazine. Yeah, <laughs> really? so we had to move everything to. I shot it all on a seventy to two hundred at two eight, two, yeah, and, nice. and shooting at two point eight in that environment. You know, just really critical on the focus, checking that we're. You yeah. know, and, and it actually made me think about mirrorless. And it was actually the Digitech said, you know, that would take. Uh, you know, I'm constantly. Uh, 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 we have a little code work which is camera check, which means is it sharp? Is it sharp? Sharp? Okay. Is it <laughs> Out of sharp or yeah. not, you know, yeah. uh, camera check. And so I'm constantly, I was constantly saying camera check. Jeez, you know, he was like, yeah, you're good, camera that's what check. you were saying you know. in your last workshop then. That's that, yeah. quite a lot you were saying that, Dan. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> F11 and I'm still worrying, you know. I don't, yeah, but um, but that, that's an interesting thought if we've got this eye-focused technology and everything's just going to be sharp at 2.8, then yeah. we need to move with that, don't we, really? You know, yeah. Rather than just sort of, you know, the hit rate. It's getting uh, it's, yeah. it's getting so good now. It's, mm. it's so scary now. It's so good, and even you know, as as Jake knows, it's in a medium format world now as well. Eye focusing on the GFX one hundred, and it's almost up there with the Sony's on then, you know, their mirrorless. Amazing. System. So it's do crazy. You find like you mentioned F eleven that sort of thing. Do you find yourself in that celebrity style of things where you're very quick? You just you can't really be worrying about focus too much. So you know what? Let, let's shoot at f eleven just to cover our bases. Are you? Do you ever find yourself in that situation, or are you? Do you know yeah, what? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I generally shoot at f eight in a studio, and I know there we're going to be covered generally. And I think the five D Mark four is even better than five D Mark three. Yeah. Um. You know, just in terms of it of the, of the the, the accuracy and um, so the hit rate is really good then and then if they're moving around a bit if they lean forward you've got maybe, a little bit of play, you've yeah, got a play. so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and also um, I shoot really quickly so I, I generally don't shoot more than f8 because we're shooting on using d2s a lot now and sometimes 2400 um, pro, pro photo packs yeah. but still I'm um, I'm interested in the fast recha- recharge click, 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 through click, click. oh yeah really quick yeah. oh are you so is that way. because you're getting them to do like, like I don't know where you're talking to them or getting them to move or so rather than just okay hold that hold that movie nose a little bit an inch to the left you're not micromanaging them no just, no. no I'm sort of fluidity. making this moment it's building it's kind of building and then once the moment happens and then you're just it. and then and then yeah okay, yeah, so okay. That's do you how, get that from your press days Maybe, uh, maybe. I don't normally see portrait shoots doing that. Maybe so. a bit. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of feel like a moment can be kind of re- encouraged a bit. So, yeah. you know, it's me talking to them, me Built. interacting yeah. with them. I'm seeing a lot of your pictures and, where they're not actually looking at the camera, which is mm-hmm. normally a lot of celebrity shooters looking at the camera. Yeah. So I suppose, like, you know, you're getting them to do something. Yeah, something a little bit, I suppose. But I, for me, it feels like there's just this window that 
that sounding too woo woo feels like it's 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 there for me and them and kind of you know it's it's, it's, it's going to happen yeah and, and like I said and, and it, is, it, is, it is a collaborative process yeah. it, it is isn't it there's, there's, yeah. there's not just you behind the camera exactly yeah, yeah. well said and yeah. not only that if you have somebody sat there you go yeah just just look at me a minute look at me I mean it can be quite sta- it's, it's stagnant contrived. and stale it's isn't contrived. it yeah, 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 yeah that, that micromanaging yeah. thing I mean like don't get me wrong it, it works for certain people fine but yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I, I don't know how I'm in that quite a lot of beauty work obviously because obviously it's a lot different it's a lot more controlled and not so free flowing on the beauty stuff and you're with a model where the model's being paid to yes, do that. Yes, so you can yeah. be like, oh, Cynthia, keep your chin up, stay there. We're just yeah. going off for a coffee. Don't yeah. move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas, uh, where, whereas, you know, don't drop those arms. Some, some, somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somewhat different in the world of, in, in the world of celebrity, you know, on the workshops, you know, we see, you know, that, that classic thing of chimping a lot where, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. some, you know the, 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 there's so many things going on in, in the head of the, 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 the photographer, the budding photographer, you know, they shoot a frame and then just it's start to habit. study it yeah, as yeah. the as the, the the model or whoever is caught in some <laughs> epic pose, you know, trying to balance on one leg. And, Holding it for 10 minutes know, with a bead yeah. of sweat running down. Indeed, yeah. And they, they, they don't sort of see this moment that, that, that they've kind of inadvertently created. And they need yeah. to capture that yeah. rather than worry about if they... Yeah. I always used to find with, with portraits, I mean, I should shoot, I mean, I've shot thousands of portraits in, in my time. And I always used to remember it was the after that you're trying to capture. So like you're doing something funny or you're joking and they would like, and then it's the after that you're capturing, mm. not necessarily the during the expression, it's the mm. after. Almost when they're like, if a smiling, exactly. they're always, they're coming out of the smile. Exactly. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, so you've Absolutely. got to be ready for that. And you see people miss it. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Like, you, yeah. You've just built yeah. that up and you just, it's yeah. just, yeah, it's just Absolutely. fading away. I yeah. sometimes have a B-roll camera set up that's, that's not firing the flash, that's set for the ambient. And we really? lift, lift the room, lift the ambient in the room with maybe some arries. And then I do exactly what you said. I'm curating that moment. Are we there? Are we there? Are we there? Click, 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 click. Great. And then grab the B-roll camera and click, 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 because maybe really? there's something, you know, funny and real. But that's that not the flash then, that's just the ambient light. In the yeah, so I, I, often, I often do it like that because then exactly as you said, they've per- kind of performed for you for a moment or they've reacted to this window. But then you get the real bit after. get the real bit yeah, after. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, mm. so you have that as a separate camera, a separate body. Yeah, with thing. a card in it, so we're not shooting tethered on that, so that's just a separate body set to the ambient just ready to go and that's more of a kind of and that is stills that's not video that's that stills yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. but sometimes those shots are the ones that make it yeah. maybe they're like oh my god why did I just yeah, laugh so like, crazy I can't believe I and need then so old or whatever and then it's exactly what you said so okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, okay good, yeah I haven't seen anybody do that but that does make sense just shooting the ambient style of it just get a different yeah. try it sometime let me added, added value I like Interesting. it I'll try that on beauty oh damn you're still there you haven't moved <laughs> Right then, we we've got a new segment to this show now. You're 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 the first trial strip, strip, po- oh, strip poker. Strip poker. No, sorry, wrong, wrong page. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, we've got a, a ten question rapid fire round for you. So quick questions, quick answers. Great, let's okay. do it. You ready for this? I'm ready. He's primed. Look at this, charge, ready to go. Okay, favorite camera. Five D Mark Four. Oh, hang on, I have just got um, a GR2. Do you know that? that? No, is that Rico? Rico? Rico. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. Really? I'm sort of using that as a little shoot around the edges okay. camera. Okay. And I'm okay. so far so great. If you could choose right. one light modifier, what would it be? Pro Photo Beauty Dish with a grid in it, white. Most memorable shoot? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners can't see. I know, they can't. So it's yeah, brilliant. You do need to put Dad's most memorable shoot. Um, <laughs> uh, For any reason. Good, uh, bad, or... 20 miles off the coast of Sicily, the weather turned and a storm came in and there was 12 foot swell and I was on a boat on a news assignment and uh, the captain slipped on the wet deck and knocked himself out <laughs> and everyone else was on all fours being sick and I thought wow. I was going to die. Wow. Why is that not... Why, I so want to elaborate on that one. <laughs> I've got, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, there, there is a picture of me looking very green. I did then get seasick but, and, oh. and then the storm subsided. Did you get the show? We all made it. Uh, no, because... The, got lots the, of the, the news the news story was that when Mount Etna erupted, oh, right. a random small island of lava emerged twenty miles south of Sicily out of the sea, and we were there to find this island. Very random story. What the hell um, are you doing? It, it, it was it had come up, but it wasn't above the water surface. And anyway, there was twelve foot swell. So I bet uh, there was. was. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, shit. Mm. Okay. Favorite lens for shooting celebrity portraits. Twenty four to seventy. I barely take it off. Really? Yeah. Canon 2470, same. I love it. Yeah, 2470. You're the okay. same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Flash or daylight? Daylight every time. Nice. Get out. Oh, I should have put flash, daylight or 
tungsten in there. Continue yeah, light, um, I think I think daylight. Daylight. Yeah, okay. I think okay. daylight. Yeah, there's a place for the tungsten. What, well, Jake? A place for the flash. But... Black and white or color? There's only one answer to this. You know, don't fuck it up, Dan. Black and white. Oh, oh my man. Geez. Sorry, he's in the camera. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, Jake's world of color comes okay, crashing thanks down. Thanks so much, listening guys. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> uh, do you prefer shoot men or women? Women, I think. Hmm. Good answer. Do you suffer from gear acquisition syndrome? Oh, well, you said that without the abbreviation. Uh, do you suffer? Do you know from what? Gas? I, I actually, uh, <laughs> I actually suffer from camera bag acquisition syndrome. Oh, really? you're one of those. Well, not really, but Think Tank. I know we probably shouldn't be mentioning brands, should we? Uh, but no, it's like um, uh, they can sponsor us if they like. I can't. Um, I can't stop buying Think Tank things. Every time exactly. something new comes out, I think, oh, I better just have that. You know, latest Think Tank bag. My sister will look great carrying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I see Daniel of yeah, yeah. the Think Tank watch, Think Tank wallet. <laughs> Uh, if you weren't a photographer, what would you be? Not the strip show thing you mentioned earlier. Oh, really? <laughs> God, come on, God. Time and space. Loosen the show up a bit. Um, <laughs> I randomly think I, I would uh, run a garden centre. Oh, fuck that. I know, wow. I know, I, mean, you I know. know what, you don't know With sort expect, of some weird but... tropical plants and okay. like a hot house type thing. Are you pretty green fingered at home then? Not like, really. Here in London? <laughs> Not really. Like your <laughs> window box? I was going to say, yeah. It's half dead, but. Okay. Not really. <laughs> Where's the <laughs> How did you get there? That's a great anyway, answer. Studio or location? Uh, I would say location. Mm. It's helping us a little, it's helping me a little bit sometimes, sure. bring an extra something yeah. to the table. And in the studio environment, especially in the world of celebrities, you're demanding a lot of, of someone, of anyone, if you put them in the middle of a, of a background mm-hmm. uh, and give them just a stool as a prop or perhaps not even a stool. You're, you know, you're, you're demanding a lot from them. It, it's taking a lot to get a great shot yeah, sometimes, whereas within, within a location, you know, you can really... Um, well, that does lead into my next question, which was, you know, a lot of your images on your website shows a lot of studio kit in the background of your location shots. Is that something, I mean, it, like, obviously it's more popular now, but is that something something that you've sort of done over time or do you know what I kind of like the way that looks a bit raw yeah that I don't know I think guess you've got to be careful not to do it too much sometimes it's more of a BTS type feel mm. um, yeah um, you think it just gives more of a relaxed I think maybe it does but it shows it. it yeah I guess also because a lot of the time the um, you know the shots that are you're being paid to get are, you know, definitely don't have that in it. So, you know, it's kind of nice to <laughs> yeah. sort of pan out. Gap and, wouldn't be know. happy now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not at all. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, would you say your, your images are character-driven portraits or do you have a clearly defined image in mind before you arrive? Um, Touched on that earlier. Yeah, yeah. we did. I think, um, I think they are character-driven portraits. Yeah, I think, really I, I think they have to be. Yeah, I have ideas before I arrive, but obviously I don't, I, I've nearly never met the talent. So, yeah, exactly. so you know, it, there's that, you know, there, there's, the spontaneity of what will happen when me and them meet yes. and then how we interact. So there's always, there's a bit of a framework with yeah. some looseness around the edges for the spontaneity. If, have you ever been in one of those situations? I mean, you must have many, many times, um, you know, where you, where you arrive on set, you know, you've got a limited window of time to, to get your, you know, four, four setups and four shots. Have you ever had a celebrity where you, it's just been really, really hard to bring them out of, the mindset they've been in before arriving to you and getting the best out of them. How do you get around that as a photographer? Apart yeah, from, that's that's apart really from the talking thing. What if they're not interested in what you're talking? Uh, yeah, that's really that that that's really difficult and and can be really problematic. Um, I won't I won't na- name people <laughs> no, specifically. <of> <laughs> so you're like, come on, I've got the no. bleep, bleep button. Why do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've, we've done it before. Bleep, bleep, bleep 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but I did photograph an actress from a sort of a middleweight, you know, TV drama probably two years ago and she arrived at the studio and was all like oh hello super happy arrived with her little puppy sweetness and light and then went into the interview now at the end inter- there's always a in in magazine shoots there's nearly always a journalist uh, who comes as part of the day who's then doing the interview and obviously depending on what the what the um depending on what the subject is um of the interview that can really kind of affect things and yeah. so she sort of was sweetness and light going in and came out of the interview sort of stony faced wow. and oh. then arrived on set and whatever had happened in the interview oh. had really knocked her oh, gotcha. so maybe it had been very sensitive or, or whatever and Bloody i looked journalist. through the uh, i know I looked through the lens and i actually thought she was going to cry and I've ne- I've never, that's never happened to me before. And so just before I started shooting, I sort of put the camera down and went, you know, went over and said, are you okay? And she yeah. just, you know, she, she just said, this isn't, 
at all like I thought it was going to be with a really serious voice and intention. And I, I you know, I think there'd been some miscommunication. I haven't done anything yet. Sort yeah. of the slightly Vanity yeah. Fair styled shoots. It was, you know, it was very, it was a, a really beautifully styled shoot. It wasn't like, it was a very unusual situation, but she'd obviously been given some, you know, she'd sort of said, oh, I think the shoot was going to be fun, but looked like she was very, very kind of upset. So yeah, in, 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 in answer to your question, sometimes you can be really knocked for six with things like that. And how yeah. do you bring something like that back? Well, so. you know, it's just kind of trying to reassure them that, you know. How did you overcome that? Uh, yeah, well, by Alcohol. just, ju- by, by just, no, no, not, not in that situation, but uh, sometimes works, I guess, but, you know, but um, just, uh, yeah, j- just, just sort of re-explaining what we were trying to get, and, yeah. you know, talk, going back over into the styling area. Sometimes I can go back over there with them. And then if the stylist has maybe managed to talk them into wearing something that they think would look great, maybe they didn't actually have the balls to say, do you know what? I actually okay. hate the blue dress. Yeah. So I'm like, look, do, do you not like the blue dress? Cause we'll get you in something else. Let's go through these together now. Just your job come over to try and filter yeah, it down to try and work it, out the route. Yeah, of the, yeah, yeah, I was on another celebrity shoot probably a year ago where the, um, I can't name who it was, unfortunately, but yeah. you know, the celebrity walked in really, really happy, went into the styling area, came out. Um, and uh, in fact, the stylist came out. So Power walked out about three quarters of an hour later and said, she hates everything um, and uh, on, on the clothes rail and she's going home. So I said, well, well, she's not going home. And she was like, she, she is. I said, okay, well, you know, let, let's damage limitation here. There's a, there's a hot, there's a cover space ready, you know, to, to, to be filled, you know? So I said, okay, well, you know, what can we, we can, let's get a, let's get a cab around her house. We can get a courier to go around her house to pick yeah. up some of her own clothes. Okay. The stylist assistant jumped in a cab and ended up going to the West End and picking up some kind of more items of designer nice. clothing. And we started in the celebrity's own clothes, which were totally inappropriate for the shoot in every way. But we just started <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly. And I got something and I thought, this is no way what we need here. Yeah. And slowly, slowly, we kind of, you know, she she just about warmed up and then oh, the, the, the fresh okay. clothes arrived and she was just about okay. 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 in in one outfit rather than four and then in the end you know at, at the end she she shook my hand and she put her hand on mine and like looked at me and said thank you you know um appreciation it was I, I it was everything i could possibly do to try and rescue that and it was really difficult and and we got there in the end but sometimes that happens with actors and actresses which i find bizarre because that's what they kind of do for their job anyway they play this is not your first virtue. Parts, but yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. A, apparently when they feel like they've got to show themselves and especially in a stills environment sometimes right. they, okay. that's their moment of vulnerability yeah, yeah. Okay. then uh, you know, this is kind of re- fairly recent news to me, but that was a really difficult one. Yeah. So you're kind of, you're doing all you can there to be like, look, don't go home, yeah. you know. And, and, so you've, you've almost good, taken good on... solution though. Just, you know, jump in a cab, get some of your clothes. Yeah, there. Good, well, we got, know, good idea. We, we, yeah. Got, we got there. We got there, yeah. The yeah. thing is, a lot of photographers won't, will they? And a lot of photographers will just, you know, stick their back up and go, ah, oh, you know. Well, she's been a drama queen. Yeah, 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 shots have come out crap, but that's her fault. You know, it's not the way it works, is it? We know that. Yeah, and then there's, you know, then there would have been a hole in the magazine and the editor would been, you know, and then really, you won't get booked. It, it, yeah, and then you might not get booked, and then ramifications sure, of for that. sure. So you've almost taken on the second role of counselor, almost. You know? yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> right. Do you want to be respectful of your time here, Dan? Yes. Let's just coming to the end here. If you could photograph anybody, anybody at all, living or dead, as a celebrity shooter yourself, who would uh, who would you like to photograph? Um, that is a great question. Um, and I love putting him on spotlight. I know, oh. and I'm, I, I should be so good, shouldn't I? I'd, I'd love to just record the expressions we're getting. Uh, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh, really pain. What a little DJ yeah. has my pocket yeah. right as well. <laughs> really Damn, it's in my, Literally, it's in my pocket. <laughs> oh, guys, there's no webcam in here, is there? Um, well, um, I was kind of like a big U2 fan in my uh, in my youth. Okay. So okay. I think if Bono's name was on the top of the call sheet, I'd probably, all my great intentions about taking bits of black velvet and being super prepared would all go out the window really? and I'd probably just sort of fuck it all up. You know, oh, you should sure. be able to squeak like a schoolgirl and just be all giddy. And, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Nice. Like Isn't that it? funny you like say it. that, Dan? Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Fair enough. Okay. That's brilliant. Well, Dan, I'd like to just touch, I mean... You know, we've 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 dived a little bit into your vast career and your vast life and the way you approach things and stuff. But you know, you you do um, workshops as well. Um, I just wanted to touch on that as well um, to see, you know, what what's involved in your in your workshops because you do mentoring sessions as well, which I want to touch on before we close the the episode down. 
So what, what kind of workshops do you run and what, what level of photographer would you say that your workshops are for and, and what are you trying to give them, I think? Yeah, the, 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 workshops, the, the, the workshops really were born um, out of the fact that no one kind of helped me uh, on my journey to get to where I am now, there was, I wrote thousands of emails to, you know, hundreds of different photographers and no one offered me anything and no one offered any kind of help of any sort. So I was actually asked to do a workshop for someone and uh, to, to fill in and I, I did it and really enjoyed it. And then, um, there seemed to be a demand to do, to do more. So, um, uh, so, so yeah, so it's, um, it's like a, the, I generally do three a year where it's like a maximum of 12 people and it's, uh, okay. you know, we, we, we shoot, a, um, like a portrait in the morning and like a fashion shot in the afternoon. Nice. And, um, uh, and, um, yeah, people, I really enjoy doing it. People seem to get the people that turn up seem to get a great deal out of it. I'm really, yeah. I'm really kind of aiming that at people who are thinking about quitting their day jobs and making a go of it as a photographer. Um, you know, they're, they're the sort of people I think that benefit the most. So yeah, sure. yeah so we, we've we've had a really great response to them um and um uh i think there's not so much out there like that when uh they're being led by a photographer who's kind of working within the industry so yeah, i think that yeah, that's maybe agree. part of the usp um yeah. and you know i'm sort of you know it's it's no way for ego i'm doing it but by the end people are sort of shaking my hand and saying look thanks so much i haven't had a chance to do this and you know what i i i, I wish that something like this had been available when i was kind of same, just just arrived same. in london it would have been great you know mm, yeah. i'm sure you guys probably feel the same don't you you've learned the hard way yourselves yeah. you know and 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 so to be able to um you know impart a bit of that knowledge you know is um feels kind of good you know i'm i'm i make no um illusion that it's a really tough world out mm, there you know course. people are yeah. asking me things like oh you know how successful do you think i'll be you know um <laughs> you know can, can you help me get an agent all of these questions and and and, and it's a really competitive world yeah, but uh, but but if we can kind of you know help people get into a studio environment and really, you know, really sort of start to feel comfortable and, um, you know, with the equipment and, and get some great shots for themselves, then that's kind of great all around really. You know, so it's, it's nice. It's nice to get that really, you get that warm feeling for all that gratitude from those people as well, where they actually feel they've, you know, learned something and got something as a takeaway, don't you? And, you know, that help them develop their skill a little bit and a bit more knowledge of the industry, like you say. Yeah. Um, and so. even equipment. Yeah, well, absolutely. People are often absolutely kind of snow blinded by equipment, and and um, you know that that's always seems to be the big stumbling block. You know, once they've kind of in the studio environment on the workshop and they get hands on and start touching things, you know, and realizing how things work, you know, that kind of everything sort of opens up. You know, yeah, so. indeed. Where can people go and find out more about this? Yeah, we've got a website, um, Dan Kennedy Workshop. So we kind of do generally do three a year, and um, I've been doing a couple of other ones where um, uh, it, it's uh, it's only a half day. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, which is the same one that you came same to. Same I came which on. Is, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just rather than it being a hands-on. With a hands-on, people are really particular about how much camera time they get. Yes. So um, we yeah. keep we cap that at twelve people, twelve people. So they end up sort of selling out really quickly. So we ended up doing this, um, doing doing a much shorter one, a half day one, where I'm just doing a demo, and then it's a big Q and A. Observational. Yeah, observational. Yeah, observational. But I, um, we got great feedback from that. It was the first one that, that I did that uh, you came to okay, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, I think that's another way for people to be able to really see what it's like to be on a celebrity shoot and then ask all the questions they want and you know they can see you know all the elements of building the shoot meet exactly. the creative team and i think yeah. all of that you know none of that's available for people to see they can't mm. see how um how all of that comes together so yeah. and, I, and i think for our listeners you know i, I can obviously you know because i came to that and for me you know i wasn't going for any no disrespect any learning purpose but to see other commercial photographers who you know at the top of their game in the industry just just to come along and see and sit back and relax to listen for a change instead of being at the front being watched sitting at the back and watching was just a really relaxing experience for me it's just and soothing voice Dan a soothing tone <laughs> but I just want to say like coming Dan, up Dan, after the break <laughs> He's not come to do the intro. <laughs> but I just want to say that, you know, the, the energy from that workshop that you, you gave to everybody, apart from the guy that was snoring next to me, <laughs> bloody everybody kept turning around to that guy. Um, anyway, um, yeah, the, the, the energy you gave and, and, and just your personality was, was just amazing to experience. And, and if anybody is out there listening, even if you don't go for a hands-on workshop, which obviously I encourage you to do if you want to learn, learn more about photography and, and, and that environment. But if you want to go to another one of these, sort of your half-day sort of observ observation ones only, just, just go because you'll still learn a ton of stuff. 
but you'll have such a good time at Dan's workshop. And it's it's fun, it's entertaining, it's educational, and it's just beautiful to watch how quickly you get through those shoots because, you know, you talk about you for the first part and the introduction and everything else, and then, you know, the next couple of hours, I mean, you're you're smashing through shots and setups and changes while still talking to the audience and you're getting all that in a half day. It's phenomenal. What a testimonial, oh, Dan. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, great. You <laughs> thing? You get, like, you know, well, I can't see any uh, notes uh, on the uh, table uh, at the moment. <laughs> Ooh, after the show, I'm going to have to, wait to come to one of my work. Bloody hell! Oh, testimonial. Well, but, but, cheers, thanks, Ray. No, that is, <laughs> uh, just your back. Your sort code is uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, but but uh, but in addition to that, you also do like one to one mentoring sessions as well, don't you? So I'm just keen to get a little bit of you because I know your your time, you know, is is getting close for you. Yeah, the mentoring. So, so the, the mentoring uh, just happened by accident, really, as a result of people hanging around at the end of the workshop and saying, "Look, I want to learn more, um, and I, I, um, I feel quite stuck where I am, and I would love to learn more about how to maybe prog- progress." So that uh, again is just something that we uh, uh, appear to be answering a need as opposed to having a specific vision to say, "Hey, you know, let's you know, let's um, let, let's let's um, you know, let's let's put mentoring in the business plan." Kind of far yeah. from it, really. I think. You know, as I say in the, the the workshop, I've kind of got a bit of a, a bit of beef about the education system. Really, you know, here we are. We're all entrepreneurs. We 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 learn all this ourselves. We're we're doing everything from our own tax affairs through to new business, through through to you know technical know how, through to you know uh, marketing ourselves. Everything. So um, yeah. So so um, what we find with the mentoring is that people you know, they feel quite stuck. They don't have anyone that, that, um, you know, that, that, that they can kind of turn to, to talk to, um, uh, about, um, where they are in their journey and no kind of, uh, no kind of process really. We've actually put a process in place now, uh, within the mentoring because, um, you know, there's key areas which, which people, we all need to be proficient in, you know, everything from marketing to sales, to yeah. having a network, you know, to, to shouting about your own work, to your creativity, like we spoke about earlier, yeah, personal yeah. projects and stuff. So, so with the mentoring people, yeah, we're, just, we're we're getting great results actually. I just had a had a call a couple of uh, couple of days ago from one of our mentees who's in LA who just managed to blag his way uh, into do a quick um, quick photo shoot with Antonio Banderas. So he's like, oh, just he wanted a quick call to say, nice uh, what, what would you think I should do? You know, oh my like, god, okay, the hotline is open. <laughs> oh, wow. so, so yeah, so he, he he's improved massively and and he's had his first magazine cover. So I think That's it's nice. uh, you know there's this sort of acceleration that happens, and um, I myself actually had a business mentor three years ago okay. Um, okay. because, you know, I, I, I sort of, I, I felt a bit stuck in some ways, even though I'd sort of winged it and got, got myself to a reasonable level. There's no yeah. game. No one teaches you this game plan for this, you know. So well, our industry is changing so much yeah, as well. Like every, yeah. you know, every year or so, it feels like you've got to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, know, so. definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and not having either anyone to talk to you about it or w- to know what to do. Who's telling you what, what's today? Is this a website yeah. update day or, not, do, not or, or is this a new business are. day or, or is this a day to, push back and give yourself some kind of time off, whatever. There's no, you know, when you don't have a, a, um, a, a plan for that, I think it's, you know, it's really easy to just be, to just tread water. And I think most of the people turning up at the end of the workshops are so, uh, basically saying, look, I feel like I'm treading water. I know where I want to go, but I, I, don't really, I don't really have a plan to get there. So again, they can find that on your website. Your mentoring, mentoring sessions are on there in the same yeah, just go to dankennedyworkshops.com. There's a piece about the mentoring at the end. You can click on that and uh, come and see us for a taster session. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, and, uh, and a new thing as well for you, obviously uh, still photography related, but you started your own podcast recently. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ooh, bloody hell would do that. <laughs> Who would do that? Mad, I mean, mate. Geez. Well, I did. Um, I, I haven't got any, if the listeners could see all this shiny tech sitting here on this table, you've uh, definitely put me to shame. Uh, um, I have, uh, yeah, I've, I've got, uh, I think I'm three episodes in. Um, I uh, I must admit my day job seems to get uh, get in the way yeah. of finding new guests and it's a bit of my 2020 no. mission to... Uh, oh, Wayne will to, tell to, you that it to, takes up to yeah, get a yeah. huge amount of time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, I've got uh, I've, I've plans to get some some great new guests on, and uh, um, I'm never going to be Podlamania, but you know, uh, <laughs> you, one can. Too. But uh, yeah. like you say you say you're wanting to do uh, mentoring workshops now as well, Dan. <laughs> 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 okay, Dan. Well, we've uh, we generally take listeners' questions, and we just brought one in because um, because of time limits. So, we've got one here. So, uh, this is from uh, again Dave Schick. He's a very avid follower of the show. 
based in the US. Um, I'm wondering what the shortest amount of time Dan had to shoot a celebrity. Shortest amount. Wow. Uh, Good question, Dave. Great question, Dave. Dave stumps Dan. Um, probably <laughs> about... <laughs> <laughs> probably... Probably, I can't think who it was, but probably about seven minutes. Um, okay, uh, seven and minutes. I think that's just a case of binning setup two, three, and four, and just doing setup one, getting what you can, uh, and then that's it. They that's walk. It, it so, wasn't your fault. They said, "Look, we, I'm, I'm in here now. I have got seven minutes, and I'm going." Exactly. It was well, like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Gotcha. So if your lighting's not in the right place for that, when you're screwed, really, aren't you? Yeah. You're, you're stuck. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, and uh, another little one on the back of that he's got in. If you could have any camera in the world, even if it doesn't exist yet, what would you choose and why? <laughs> I have wow. a camera that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, firstly, I'll have the camera that doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I think um, uh, it's a good question. iPhone I, 12. I think, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's a worry, isn't it? Yeah. iPhone 14, yeah. Um, Shoot 4K video and just yes. pull stills from it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Just walk around with the, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I think. Um, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm super excited about the, um, the mirrorless. So I'm um, super keen to see what this new Canon mirror, mirrorless is like and uh, get my hands on that. So I think that's the, that's the next thing that I'm Stage. super excited about. I'll have to check yeah. back in and see how, yeah. you, see how you feel about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm still, yeah. I'm still trying to throw a GFX 100 in Dan's hands. So I can oh, yeah. that experience. Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll take you up. If, if you've got a spare yeah. kidney. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. The Canon systems are going up in price, aren't they? For yeah, sure. They are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Dan. I, I think that's great. I think we'll we'll round up because um, obviously we know your time is precious and you've got other things to do yeah, apart you, from mm. get, you know talk to us a pair of gas bags on the show. And um, you know we just want to say we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, before we go, we have one more question which we put at the end of our show, and that is we we ask you to personally recommend two artists, artists in terms of any medium within the photographic or video industry. Recommend two guests to come on a show with us at Podlomania to come on for some episodes. Anyone can you see right why we now away? have a list of 70? I can, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think um, I think Elizabeth Hoff is an amazing photographer. She, um, she uh, went to um, sail solo around the world uh, and got into difficulty. Um, uh, she's in that uh, oh, her cool. in a position where she is now fearless as a photographer and she's a great photographer. So wow. uh, I think you should definitely speak to her. Close friend I, of yours? I can hook you up with her, no problem. Amazing, that's what uh, we like. It's, it's, it's yeah. where we get you to hook, hook, hook them up to us. Matchmaker <laughs> Dan. We don't get arrested for yeah. harassment. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> and, uh, and who else? They can be anything in terms a- of... Anything. I mean, they could be, you know... Like lighting gaffer they could be a digi op they could be an engineer a sound engineer it could be anything really yeah there's a great guy called archie brooks bank and he has built his own company from scratch called bladesman productions and they kind of do he does a bit of everything he's got amazing energy and he's he's um uh, it's kind of he's built like a full production house now really but um they, they do everything from sort of social media content right through to really lovely short films and, and everything Beautiful. in between but just his energy and the way that he's moved with the times um uh, i think think he could be great for you guys Interesting. so okay. i will definitely connect you with him too yeah brilliant nice thank you dan i appreciate that yeah we're going to hold you to those they sound great yeah, yeah. and uh i just want to give you a little promotion that you've um obviously p- put out previously oh, yeah, i think he's retracting that now jack um so uh, for, for our listeners dan's been very very kind um with his workshops and things he's giving our listeners a special offer and uh, dan has generously giving a 50 percent off a mentor taster session uh, and kindly also giving 25% off um, one of his workshops as well. So uh, we thank you for that, Dan. I really appreciate your generosity on that. Will there be a little link, a little code or a link you can give us yeah, in the show notes? Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Definitely. Thank Impressive, you. Impressive, man. Yeah, Jesus. Thank you for that. So, wow. Dan, before we wrap up, um, just to uh, tell our audience, where can they find you, your social media and your all the places where they need to look? Dan Kennedy photo for Instagram, and I'm as active as I probably can be on Instagram um, and uh, danielkennedy.com for my website. Yeah. yeah. And, and Dan Kennedy workshops for anyone interested in doing any of the workshops. And your podcast, Dan, Dan Kennedy. Dot com Daniel. forward slash podcast when I get around to getting some more guests. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> well, we know a couple, we know two that you might better go down. Uh, <laughs> probably, probably cheap, you know, cheap, cheap for you, free even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing okay folks well I think that's been a great episode Jake do you yeah and, really good yeah and we, perfect yeah great thank you Dan yeah, just really want to thank Dan again for his time and remember folks if you'd like to help us produce and record even more great interviews and content for your ears with some of the world's greatest creatives 
uh, your donation support is very much appreciated um, because it does cost us money. Um, <laughs> and if you like this episode and you don't want to miss out on new episodes, then uh, please make sure you subscribe to us on your chosen podcast player, or you can subscribe to us on uh, subscribe to the podcast on www.podlomania.com forward slash subscribe. And remember, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, iTunes Store, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbean, and Podlomania.com. And please give us a like and don't forget to comment. So that coming to a close, I'd just like to thank Dan for joining us in his busy schedule. Um, I know he's got other shoots to uh, plan and prepare for. So we just want to say a huge thanks, Dan. It's been awesome talking to you. Um, And again, I recommend everybody go to one of your workshops because uh, it's just an awesome place to be. Thank you, guys. Really nice to meet you both. And thanks, uh, uh, yeah, Yeah. thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. And to our listeners, we'll see you in the next episode. I know, yeah. Maybe we won't be in a, in a room like this again. We can all go and play we'll be, sack now. Well, we had a goldfish bowl. That's it, yeah. yeah. I'm <laughs> going to get my tokens out in a minute and see if I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <not yet. laughs> Thanks, Thanks so much, guys. Take Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks.